Hello everyone, this is Jean and welcome back to Astral Doorway. On this episode, I'd like to talk about the first time I came out of body uh, because Barbara R said, I think it would be awesome if you talked about the first time you went out into the astral, what things were hard and what did you do first? So around the year or so, before I had my first experience, uh, I didn't know anything about spirituality other than lucid dreaming and, you know, some dabbling in philosophy. Uh, and as well as, uh, of course, I was raised by my Catholic mother. But other than that, I didn't know anything about spirituality or spiritual topics. You know, I'm not one of those astral projectors you hear of who have had the ability since they were very young or even babies or when they were children or even remember what their soul was doing before they were incarnated into their current physical body. Nope, I was a regular teenager and around the age of 18, I began to look into astral projection. Now, I looked into astral projection after first having looked into lucid dreaming. Uh, I was practically very good at lucid dreaming. I had hundreds of lucid dreams before I tried astral projection. Now, this of course helped me get familiar with non-physical experiences um, but even though I had many experiences, you could say that lucid dreaming sort of made me depressed. It was exciting for a bit, don't get me wrong, but it was kind of depressing because I came to the realization that everything in my experience, whether I was dreaming or while I was awake, was happening in my mind. And this you know, sort of feels like a prison. You know, what is reality then? What is the truth behind it all if everything I see, everything I think and experience is just an aspect of my mind? And so I looked into meditation for a while to try and see cancers. And I did, of course, at an energetic level and intuitive level. But then I found astral projection, which is as many of you know, a very tangible and direct way to experience reality. Reality beyond these subconscious, subjective dreams of our perception. And so, yes, when I found out about astral projection, I was very excited. I got my first book on it, which is called the Art and Practice of Astral Projection by Ophiel. It's quite an old book, uh, but it was written in quite a direct way. And from the time I heard about astral projection and I started reading that book, I think it took me around three to four months to have my first experience. Now, keep in mind, of course, I had been meditating, experiencing lucid dreams, and I was sort of motivated from this base experience of an existential crisis, right? I was also in a time where I was not sure of what I was doing with my life. And I was really looking for answers genuinely, seriously in my soul. Uh, so yeah, I was lucky enough to have my first out-of-body experience in a matter of months. And this experience happened spontaneously, as still do most of my experiences. Uh, one night, I found myself waking up in the middle of my sleep. But of course, instead of waking up regularly, I began to spontaneously feel this sort of trembling, this earthquake, you know, the vibrations, right? This energetic vibrations all over my body. Now, you know, you don't 
feel this in lucid dreaming. So this was entirely new to me. Of course, I had read about it in the book that I was reading and I immediately recognized it. Um, you know, of course, I wasn't actively thinking, you know, I was focused on the goal. I wasn't analyzing. I wasn't becoming excited. Uh, I was in the perfect state for astral projection and to experience these vibrations. And as I started feeling the, this intense energy all over my body, I started to see colors swirling in my vision. And if you see the book by Afil, uh, you'll see even on the cover, he has this sort of mosaic, multicolored blobs of colors on his book cover, which of course symbolizes the hypnagogic stage of these colors that were swirling in my vision. So I knew what those were as well. And at the same time, above all this, I was hearing noises, like a white noise, a hurricane in my ears. So you have the vibrations, the colors swirling in my vision, uh, these loud extrasensory sounds in your ear. Um, and all of this became so intense that I eventually had this innate sense that I could amplify them by sort of leaning into them. And as I did, the sounds would become more attuned to what was trying to emerge. And the vibrations in my body started to become more intense. And the colors were, they were at first swirling in my vision. And then they started to slowly turn into an image, into a scene. And I was pushing myself into them. I was embracing them. And I remember so distinctly coming out of my body slowly and intensely, separating from my body. And I, as I was gradually detaching, I saw my physical body fast asleep beneath me. And I instinctively knew how to float up. Uh, I didn't roll out or get up. I actually floated up and was flying in my bedroom and I saw my physical body beneath me. Uh, I read that, you know, you shouldn't look at your physical body and you shouldn't stay near your physical body. Uh, but I had no problem with that, actually. I, I never have. Um, I don't think that's true. You can stay near your physical body. I just think a lot of people freak out. Uh, but I was fine and probably because I've had a lot of lucid dreams. And so there I was floating in the middle of my bedroom, seeing my physical body beneath me and, you know, the most amazing and most profound aspect of astral projection is the energy of it. When compared to lucid dreaming, lucid dreaming is just like a ghost, phantom-like thought or fantasy in your mind. You know, you can imagine what a lucid dream is like almost by just imagining it. But it's very hard to do it with astral projection because astral projection in the moment is always a new sort of energy and it's intense and you can feel it and there is information in that energy. Included in that information is the palpability, the reality and the objectiveness of what you're experiencing, you know? And so while I was floating in the middle of my bedroom, I started to lower my astral body to the floor. I felt the sensation of the carpet under my feet. Uh, I looked around my dark lit room, which just, you know, felt more natural and vivid and alive than I'd ever seen before. It had a luminous and magical quality to it, especially because the moon was full on that night and it was shining through the blinds. 
of my window. Uh, the luminous and magical quality that the moonlight brought into my bedroom was just irradiating this energy. Uh, so I walked up to it and put my hand through the moonlight, uh, just feeling this energy. And I touched my bedroom wall and, and just, I remember looking at it in this vivid detail. You know, this experience is still one of my most vivid and well-remembered experiences. And I think I'm lucky to have such a vivid and typical first astral projection experiences with all the hypnagogic stages and just floating into my bedroom and seeing my physical body sleeping. It was realistic to the core of my being, so realistic that it felt highly physical, uh, more physical than waking life, especially back then when I was not so much a spiritual person. Most of my physical waking life was spent just in ordinary consciousness, and ordinary consciousness is mostly dreamlike because most of us are dreaming, thinking about other things, fantasies, um, but astral projection, once you achieve it, it is always in the moment, it is always present, and you know, this sort of experience where you come out into a bedroom, you're feeling the vibrations, is profoundly real and leaves you with this shock in your consciousness. It did for me anyway. And with this hyper-awareness uh, and authentic experience, uh, it was so overwhelming and convincing uh, that I remember actually walking around my room and having the instinct to be careful to not wake anyone up in the house. You know, in the physical, I'd usually go to the toilet in the middle of the night and, you know, try not to wake up my family. I even felt that in the astral, strangely. Um, you know, it felt so normal. Um, I actually considered for a moment, I remember having a moment of apprehension, a little bit of anxiety that, you know, wait, I'm separate from my body. How am I going to get back? Uh, I even considered, like, am I going to die? <laughs> am I dead? Uh, but I quickly dismissed that and just carried on. You know, I had already read that astral projection is completely safe. And after spending some time in my bedroom, seeing my physical body asleep, feeling and seeing my bedroom in such vivid detail, I intended to go outside. Now, I didn't want to figure out how to open my door, go outside the front door, uh, so I just simply flew up again and went through my bedroom wall. And as I came out on the other side, um, you know, I felt a shock from just going in my bedroom. Now, going outside was just on a whole other level. I saw, you know, I was up in the air uh, on the second floor and outside of my bedroom where I lived at at the time over, uh, I think it's 11 years ago now, um, it was very green. Uh, we had lots of trees and it was nighttime. And oh, I just saw this scene, this version of this place. Uh, I saw all the trees in front of me. I saw the full moon shining uh, and the stars and just a few gray clouds in the sky. And I remember vividly seeing the moonlight shining and casting its ambience onto the treetops. I was floating there for, I think, about five or ten seconds, taking in this scene, uh, 
and just being overwhelmed to the point where I woke up. And as you can imagine, for me back then, who really had no idea about what I was getting myself into, um, I laid there in shock for a while. I didn't go back to sleep that night. I was truly in shock, uh, but mostly, of course, overjoyed as well at what I had experienced, especially after being disillusioned with lucid dreaming experiences. Uh, This was touching an aspect of objective reality and it is expansive and you learn and you feel a new sense of life and a new sense of being from consciously using an astral energetic body and I really struggled to contain my excitement for a good few days. Uh, Of course when I woke up I wrote down the entire experience in my journal uh, trying to express how I felt in words which you know I never had any trouble doing with lucid dreaming and as I was writing Uh, I looked around my room and how it was precisely the way I had just experienced it. I even got up and went to the bedroom window to wave my hands through the moonlight. Um, I just got this shock and awe that it just didn't feel the same when I did it in the physical. Uh, It felt less vibrant. I wanted to be out of body again just to feel my hands in the moonlight again and see my room in this way. Uh, But of course, my mind was too overwhelmed with excitement to really experience it in the same way. I also went back downstairs out through my front door to see the same scene of the beautiful night sky with the full moon. It was lovely to see in the physical, but I was still longing for that experience to be back there. And of course, I was a little bit disappointed that my experience was cut short. But that's what happens with most people in astral projection. Uh, I was actually quite lucky to have quite a long experience and not wake up so soon. I was able to even see my physical body, not freak out too much, uh, walk around my bedroom and then even get outside just to get a glimpse of what it's like to be outside in the astral. And actually, I know a lot of you have probably listened to my how I proved astral projection is real video and how that was a validating and confirming astral projection experience. Well, my first experience was a confirmation experience too. Uh, If not just the feeling of it and confirming this whole new sensation and this inner intuitive knowing but also the fact that it was a full moon and that it was a clear sky and that my bedroom window and the moonlight rays were exactly the same as they were in the physical and that when I went outside, it was exactly the same and the actual position of the moon was in the exact same place as well. Um, I wasn't taking notes of moon phases or anything back then. I couldn't contain my excitement so much that I told loved ones and family members. Uh, But that was a mistake. (laughs) Uh, I could see how confused and how they just thought I was crazy. Uh, So since then, I kept my experiences to myself for many years and I continue to have many more profound experiences. And actually not long after that one, one of my first experiences was also coming out of body 
not so far from the house that I was in. And I went to a sort of parallel dimension to the physical, uh, but there was many people living in the afterlife in this one. And I met and talked to a family. So I'll make a video for that one uh, because this is running a bit long now. And yeah, so really it was just one of the most typical astral projection experiences where you come out, you get shocked and you go back to body and you stay in awe of the experience. Um, but yeah, you know, Barbara asked what things were hard. Um, honestly, I was very focused I took the book to heart that I read, I took it seriously, and I really wished and intended and desired to astral project in a practical way, you know, not just hoping, and I was absolutely sure of myself and my intentions. And of course, I had a lot of lucid dreaming experiences beforehand, and I was already practicing meditation, so... I didn't actually struggle that much. Um, and, you know, I feel like a lot of people, when they first start astral projection, they seem to think that it's a practice of going to sit down in your bedroom, lying down, and just thinking about astral projection and hoping that they will come out. It's not that. When you go to bed, you need to relax. Uh, you, can, you, know, you can say some affirmations and stuff, but you really need to relax. Astral projection will happen naturally because we all do it every night unconsciously. It's all about just getting your subconscious to wake you up during the middle of the night. It's not going to happen if you're still feeling wide awake. You need to pass the phase of sleep first you know, and it is really actually not that complicated to get in tune with your subconscious. Um, I'm sure many of you have woken up a few minutes before your alarm, or you've just told yourself to wake up at a certain time, and you'll wake up, you know, you can do that. You don't actually need an alarm. Before you go to sleep, you just look at the time and you'll say, okay, it's 11 at night now, I'm going to wake up at 7. You don't think about it, you don't get anxious about it, you just know you will do that. You just know, okay, I'm going to wake up at this time. It's the same with astral projection. I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and I'm going to leave my body. And that's it, you know? Um, but with what things were hard, I think it was more after, you know? making the experience happen again. Uh, I think that's the hard part because you get so excited about what experience you have and then you try to replicate it. But you can't replicate it because it's an entirely new experience all the time. You can't experience astral projection again from your mind, from memory, from replication. No, because that would be a dream. That would be projecting into a thought. Uh, astral projection is always sort of a mini death, a mini death of the ego. And through passing through that phase of death, we rebirth into a new experience. So we have to learn to meditate, to completely surrender and completely allow an entirely new experience to happen rather than hoping for another experience. Because I have read uh, a few people online who really struggle to have another experience and a lot of them seem quite stubbornly attached to the first experience they had. But in reality, they need to let go of it and allow space for another experience to happen. Okay, so, you know, I'll get more experiences out there. Um, I have another video that I'm going to release on Tuesday, which is about my Patreon and a secret little project I'm working on that I'm going to talk about. Um, okay, well, thank you for listening. As always, this is Astral Doorway. 
please subscribe if you've not already, and I will see you on the next episode.